last up in this round is Mr. Dwayne Walton. Dwayne is from Morris and has been writing for as long as he can remember. He wor his works have been published in independent and small press magazines, one of which, called Scary Monsters, is sold at Barnes & Noble, and so he had the great thrill of seeing his work at Barnes & Noble, which is a good, which is a big thrill. I share that with you. And it was a special added treat. And I have to tell you, for those who don't know, Dwayne's working on a mystery thriller which has one of the greatest concepts I've heard in a long time. It's about a person who kills people by tickling them to death. And the guy's name is Dr. Tick, T-Y-K. T-I-K-Y-L-L. -L. There we go. So every, every meeting we wait anxiously to hear what happens with <laughs> Dr. Tickle this time. So Dwayne Walton. His first selection, uh, he's, he's got two poems to read. One is called Exorcism, Perfect for the Season, and Suburban Legend. <clears throat> I've always viewed my writing as an exorcism, getting out all the emotions and whatever's troubling me and pouring it out onto the page for all the world to see. So it was a, it was only a fitting that uh, I write a poem called Exorcism. If I put you on paper and you leave me alone, I'll have you put on display. Please haunt me no more. Why don't you find someone new? from among the endless mass. I'm sure someone else would yield. To their mind, you'll attach. You can feast on their fear, as you've done with mine. Fly in the face of reason. Skeletal fingers pick their minds. Go commit your mental rapes. Yet I'd like to know, if they put you on paper, will you leave them alone? A few years ago, somebody actually issued me a challenge to come up with my own urban legend, which I did. It was based on uh, an actual unfortunate incident that I decided to share my experience with the world in this poem I call Suburban Legend. It didn't get as bad as this in the poem, it just, it just felt like it. This tale I must uncover, how the cousin of a friend, of a friend of a brother, met his fateful end. It happened one dark night, on this date one year ago. He thought he'd be all right, no need to take it slow. He thought he'd have a drink as he popped the top, but he didn't pause to think, he didn't know when to stop. One by one they'd go, in moonlight's eerie glow. Triple shot mocha espresso. He drank three in a row. He had no way to see the inevitable distress from triple shot times three, under a full moon, no less. His flesh began to crawl. His heart commenced to pound. His pupils became real small. His eyes darted around. It quickly came to a head, the tension built within. He was carried off by dread and burst right out of his skin. He skittered down the street as fast as frenzied bones can, and everyone he would meet yelled out, That's a skeleton, man! <laughs> they all gave chase and became a maddened throng, all in a desperate race. To, to expunge what didn't belong. A musician making tracks soon arrived upon the scene and proceeded to play yakety sax, better known as the Benny Hill theme. He may have ran to parts unknown, or he may be running still. His bones were never again shown, never again to send a chill. My torrid tale is now through, and you can say you know what horrible fate awaits you for drinking three in a row. <laughs> 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 
This last piece uh, I wrote when I was still active on MySpace. Um, I, they say, you know, you're not supposed to say who you're writing about. So I took that and I just, I would just call it a little thing I call to whom it may concern. And I figured they'd know who they were. <clears throat> to whom it may concern. Dear whom, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I didn't treat you right. I'm sorry I didn't cling to every word you said. I'm sorry I didn't make you the center of my world. I'm sorry I got off my leash. I'm sorry I got out from under your thumb. I'm sorry I had the audacity to be right about something. I'm sorry I had the audacity to use a word like audacity. I'm sorry I didn't allow you to drown me in word vomit. I'm sorry for asserting myself when I should have simply smiled, bent over, and spread it as wide as it'll open. I'm sorry the universe doesn't revolve around you. But do you know what I'm the most sorry for? It's not what you think. I'm sorry I allow you to control me like this. And if by any chance that person is here, now you've gotten that message twice. <laughs>